Adriano. Two up now. Won the first hole, lost the second, and uh, was out in 33 to uh, Mark Mullen's 34. And Mullen took six at the par five tenth. And, uh, and they both had a birdie apiece since then. So Ballesteros, two up. And, and looking very confident indeed. Moulin's played pretty well. There's been a lot of good golf played uh, this week. It's still very early in the, in the season. And although we've had such a mild winter, uh, many golf courses aren't perhaps as far advanced as, as you tend to think they should be. I don't know why, perhaps we've had a coolish breeze over the last three or four weeks, I don't know, but the, the grass hasn't really started to grow yet. I think the next three or four weeks will be... Uh, uh, a lot will happen in the next two or three weeks. Uh, this is Mark Moulin's line into the green, very flat as you can see, and the, the green just sort of wanders at the end of the fairway. There's no great humps or bumps, it's not built up in the air. And it looks to be a straightforward shot. He's got 30 yards or more between the two bunkers. So if he can just get a straight shot into the middle of the green, he won't be more than six or seven yards from the hole. Ah, uh -uh. now as he pushed it a bit right, will it come over the bunker? Yes, it will, and that could come back off the slope if he's not too fiery. No. Stays up the bank. Just flew a little bit out of the uh, light rough. Well, Seve with like about a six, that sort of thing. Five, six. a nice view here of Sebi's swing pretty well straight up and down the line there's no figure eights at the top of the back swing just goes straight up and down on the same plane same line Ooh, he hit that quite hard and he looks slightly anxious and that's why he just let it fall away fade away to the right and caught the sand Both of them have missed the green. And if Seve's ball hasn't plugged, he will have a, a simple little bunker shot. And Mark Mooland, a relatively easy little chip from the high ground down onto the green. Behind them on the 13th, previous hole, Mike Harwood playing his second shot first. about 130, 140 yards. And pretty good, not as close as the other two just before him. But he found the right part of the fairway. And the third glorious day we've had here at St. Pierre. Deep. And those, although Woosnam looks further away, about equidistant. So back to Savvy, who's in the right hand bunker. He's uh, on a slight upslope here, fairly much towards the front lip, and uh, the shot he might just have to hit a little harder than normal to compensate because there'll be a little more sand probably in that lip and also he's on an upslope which will take a little distance from the ball but he uh, does play these shots so remarkably well he had a very similar one on the first hole which he got to three feet and made his birdie so uh, it's very likely that he'll get up and down again Ballesteris to play first and for those of you having trouble getting out of bunkers this is really quite a small shot 
but notice the length of, of backswing and follow through from Ballesteros. So many people try and just pick or flick the ball off the sand, which is, believe it or not, more difficult than just swinging it fairly well back and just pushing it through. Up she comes. <laughs> through it in. Oh, maybe a yard from the hole. Well, he won't be overjoyed about that, but a very confident shot. Mooland has just gone through and just into the semi-rough. Now he's going to, he's coming down the hill. It's just a question of whether he feels he's got enough room, enough flat green to land on and whether he can check it before it gets the hole or whether he just bobs it short and runs it down the hill. While he surveys that, we'll have a look at Mike Harwood on the 13th green. And it was indeed, indeed he to putt first. Raced it at the hole, and he's going to have a little bit coming back. <coughs> Moulin just knocks it forward and down the slope. Very quick shot from there, and he goes all three times as far away as Seve's ball, Seve's shot from the sand. Very fast little shot down the hill. So this is how the quarterfinals stand at this moment. Ballesteros two up on Mooland after 13. Harwood of Australia two up on Woosnam after 12. Elazabal and Smith all square now. Tremendous match that one. And Dernian three up on Brown after nine. Ian Woosnam at the 13th. About to get another one back. He oh. right on the lip. We saw Seve's putt from exactly that direction pull up quickly, and that seemed to pull up very quickly too. Seems to come up a little slow right as you get to the hole. So he's got his four. Howard oh, still with a little bit of work to do. Mike Harwood from Australia beat Tony Johnson this morning of. Zimbabwe and of course a good scalp yesterday Mark McNulty the one thing he did right with the approach part was to get it past the hole and it's gone a little bit too far but at least he will have seen which direction the ball moved after it went past the hole which will give him an indication as to which side to borrow coming back maybe a little bit from his left to right Confidently, didn't even take a borrow, hit it firmly in the back, stays two up. The 14th, now and Mark Moulin for his par four. Oh, he really is an ace putter, as his dear old father was before. He's two down. No, oh, begging part. Yes, he is two down. Ballester is uh, he won. He won the last hole, Mark Moulin, with a birdie. Now Seve came out of the bunker to about a yard. Has this to remain two up? <laughs> two up and four to play. Back behind on the team, Mike Harwood from Australia and Ian Woosnam. And uh, Woosnam with the honour. What a birdie at the 12th, par 5, 12th. He's two down. He needs to put in a stout finish now or Harwood will need to make a mistake or two if Woosnam is going to get through to the next round. He's had a few very close calls. Richard Boxall... In, in all truth, did nothing wrong yesterday, but uh, Woosnam escaped. Four, the left. Oh, four on the left. He's knocked it into the crowd, and 
All depends how it nestles or oh, well above ground. No, no problems unless there's a, a tree in his way. That left-hand side is well open here. There's a possible plan for rejigging the course here. I would say uh, architecturally it needs a rebunkering program, uh, perhaps some reshaping of, of the greens. Uh, as there is a, a large area up on the left-hand side that's open, but one must remember this is very much a holiday and members golf course. Uh, we don't want to make it too difficult. But there is a vast area up the left-hand side where players can go and with their power it's really it really presents no problem but Harwood has hit a splendid shot Mooland has driven now Seppi his opponent down the middle now he's looking a little to the right you want to be down the left hand side here and he isn't that means he's going to have to come over a couple of trees that block out uh, the right-hand side of this dog leg. It's 412 yards. That's over here. Two up. And two Welshmen in the opening two matches. Mark Mooland and Ian Woosner gave some tough information. In fact, it's Neath playing Lenethley today, not Pontypool. I apologise. Certainly the Welsh are doing their the home players, their home men, very well. They've played very steadily. And of course, there's the view from behind this 15th green. And the players, apart from winning money, making, earning their living, of course, keen to amass Ryder Cup points. Every pound is another point, and they reckon to get automatic selection, you need to have 120,000 of them in the bank by the end of the German Open. And of course, a couple of big guns still to rejoin the tour in Messersfaldo and Lyle. They'll be at the PGA Championship at Wentworth at the end of this month, where to we will be as well. It's a big test for Mark Boland, this. He may have played in tournaments with Ballesteros before, but I doubt he's ever played him head-to-head, -head and, well, he's come out of it very well. It's not easy playing someone with his reputation. Why don't we have a look at something that happened a little earlier this afternoon involving Ian Woosnam on the uh, third... This is the par three third, 135 yards. And just have a look at this for a tee shot. Will it, will it, will it? Oh. Very near. So a simple tap in to the two and he won that hole. But that was very close to being a one. Now we're back live with Ian Woosnam in his match with Mike Harwood. And uh, you can see just asking the crowd to move back on the left. He wants them maybe another 10 or 15 yards further to the left. Ball looks to be lying okay. The crowd have been walking in this direction. So the grass is all smoothed down. Not bad. Four hundred and fifty four yards and I would think from from here that's a, a smooth four crash with a five it's like a four he really does sweep through the ball so beautifully and finds the green Two down. 
and only some five holes left and uh, Howard looking very competent indeed when uh, the winner of the Portuguese Open last year he's been coming over here for oh, a number of years he's just 30 years of age tall fellow six foot four <laughs> same sort of figure of Peter Fowler and Mike Clayton all of them from Australia and, and very welcome visitors they are and he's got this match really he's got a firm grip on this game Wilson's on the green but uh, really not very close to the hole and so now it's a question of not making any mistakes make your opponent win the holes with birdies well I don't know he doesn't look best pleased and that's the reason you see he just came off it and now well, we have to wait and see but gives Woosnam heart Seve on the 15th his second shot got to go over the well the right hand side of the big tree and it could be a little bit left and that's not the ball there that's a little leaf or something and I think he's over the other side he's certainly not very happy with it so maybe a chance for Moulin middle of the fairway it's all got to go over the branches a bit Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's a three of anybody's language. Not dead by a long way. Tremendous shot. Well, we recorded those. And indeed, Ballester is away to the left of the green as he approaches the right as we look from our position behind the green and well the unenviable task of this for a half So he's only one down and three holes left to play. Meanwhile at the 14th, Harwood and Woosnam, and it would appear Mike Harwood will play first from the sand. He's two up on Ian Woosnam. Quite a bit of uh, sand to go over before he gets to the green and the pin or oh, eight or nine ten yards or so from the top of the bunker see the open stance the open club face again you get a good view of the length of swing the rhythm of the shot right back and through there's no flicking at it he didn't carry it far enough the short 16th or the not so short 16th depending on your view of it 237 yards par 3 Mooland with the honour oh and he's hiked it away and that could be dangerous there's bushes he's in bounds but well it's a bit it's a tall order to say you must hit short hole greens if you've just won a hole. It's a difficult one, this. And those who've gone with a long iron over these two or three days have usually missed it. They're really trying to chase one up the bank. And it's uh, somehow better with the forward or something of that order, with a soft dropping shot onto this plateau green. And he may not have a backswing, Master Moland to wait and see quite a wide green <coughs> the wind must have moved around a little bit it was against in the opening two days in fact there's hardly a breath of wind now at all I would think 
Alasteris a little bit threatened now, just one up. Tracks are four. The crowd are a long way back there. Oh, that's not too bad. It's the green short right. He at least will have a shot and fairly straightforward one, but we'll have to wait and see what's happened to Mark Moulin's ball, which is up there on the left-hand side as we look at it from behind the tee. Back to the 14th. Wilsonham's third shot. Hold was still in the bunker for three, and that's right to the whole side, and I think that'll be conceded. Yes, and Wisdom wins the hole, and suddenly he's only, uh, only one down. The crowd and the players make their way down through the valley in front of the 16th green this for those of you've watched over the year used to be the 18th and after this they cut left through the new cottages that are being built timeshare i suppose and quite a long walk to the 17th tee which was the old 10th and on the very back of the 15th up high in the bank, you have Woosnam, who watches anxiously as he just looks as if he's pushed it down the right-hand side a little bit. And if he is down the right, he could well be behind the tree. And here, we, we over the next half an hour or so, we're going to have a classic sort of bit of golfing psychology, match play psychology, both... Mooland and uh, Harwood were well, really very much in control of their matches and uh, well, both of them so far have uh, made little errors and so uh, Mooland and Ballesteros of course Seve now has one up Mooland getting into it and it's a very close run thing but they perhaps get the position where they are beaten by themselves. Two, two good drives side by side. Now again, not far from where Jeff Hawkes played his famous backhanded stroke. Move the professional photographers. And of course the difficulty here, whereas Jeff Hawkes was able to play a sort of pitch and run, we don't know whether he can get by the bunker. Clive's down there. What sort of shots? Can he play to the green without going over the bunker, Clive? Yes, he can get to the back edge. He can't play at the pin, but I mean, whatever he does, it's going to be a very difficult shot, and uh, a result on the green would be a very good one. It looks if like he might give it a kind of uh, backhand prod. He was... Earlier on, looking at bouncing it off the wall, he was looking at playing left-handed. There's all sorts of variations, but, uh, well, there you are, you see. You need a lot of practice on that one. And still quite a difficult shot, too. He's coming down the uh, green, whereas Seve, although he missed the green, he's missed it on the best side, and he's coming up the hill, and uh, it's going to be much easier for him to judge the pace. So, uh, Mooland here in uh, quite a spot of... Uh, quite, a, quite a difficult situation for him. Trying to attack, but uh, so easy to lose another hole. And Clive, is it still his shot, or...? As, well, uh, from where I'm standing, it looks more like Sebi's, but uh, I think uh, Mooland's going to play first. It's probably just the angle I'm at. Mooland, indeed. Third shot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chance for a fall. But 
this man has only now got to get down in two to win the hole and go two up and two to play. Interesting that uh, Durney didn't nip across and mark his ball. He's entitled to for a Moulin to get across and uh, mark his ball because he's entitled to. He's in charge of his ball. In the past, he used to have to ask permission. And a player, the, or your opponent in match play, could leave your ball there. He didn't, and so he might have come in off it a bit. So the situation is Mullen must hole, but even if he does, Sevi will still have his to win. done it. And after his tee shot, that was certainly the best he could have hoped for. But it might be a terminal error he made with missing the screen. <laughs> of the air and toe of the putter in the air like Aoki now. He seems to get lower and lower as the years go by, but doesn't miss many. Uh, ooh. <laughs> get in by much, but that's two up now, two holes left. Get back in command once again. Mike Harwood. At the 15th, second shot. One up. Against Ian Wisdom, and that's safely on. Perfect length, but a bit wide. And there you see one of the big, big trees that uh, uh, choke. You see, you put the old hand round the throat there, meaning I'm beating myself. I'm not playing my game. And that's what Moulin did on the hole we've just seen. He'd, he'd won two of the previous three holes and then he puts his tee shot virtually unplayable. Woosnam has got out of jail with some magical shots and one or two mistakes in his previous round from his opponents. He's not really threatening but he will keep going because he's uh, well uh, I don't say necessarily more seasoned campaigner but uh, is used to winning or being in, the, being in the hot seat more perhaps than Mike Harwood. both about the same distance but Mike Howard first putt we said earlier today when you get to the closing stages of a match and it's easy to say it's almost criminal to lose a hole to a par figure and although the 16th hole here the next hole they're coming to is a difficult a long par three uh, you you really must get your three and then Poor old uh, Mark Moulin missed the green. Not only did he miss the green, put it in virtually an impossible place. <coughs> Sammy, with a chip and a putt, has uh, moved back to two up and two to play. Uh, if Harwood can finish 4-3, four, 4-4, four, four, Wisdom will have to birdie two of the last four holes to beat him. And that's quite a tall order. Speed. Yeah. Oh, I say that'll make him feel a lot better. <laughs> I 
Ah. Calling on an outside agency. Well, we've seen Wisdom hole a couple of very crucial putts over the past couple of days. My word, he needs one here. Even if he holds this putt, which must be all of 12, 14 paces, it'll only be a half. Putt of Harwood's fairly ran into the hole. It wasn't sort of uh, dribbling up to the edge. It's pretty straight, pretty straightforward. Not many hidden burrows here. This for a half. Just pushed away, and so that birdie from Mike Howard puts him in a rather nice position. Two up and three to play. Des Smith at the 14th. He's one down, but he has this four, a birdie three. And in he goes straight in the middle, and that's back to all square in his match against Elazabal. Seventeenth, 362 yards. Quite a long walk from the 16th green to 17th tee. But they have arrived, and Ballesteros it is to go first. Two up and two to play. Fairway tilts right to left. You don't want to go down the left-hand side. You can get blocked out. Sevi pushes it up on the right, and that's fine. Moulin is playing with an iron. He'll be knocking this towards that uh, bunker up on the right by the big tree. Oh, has he hit that left? If he has, he pulled his last one. Has he pulled it again? Is he down the left? Yes, he is. That may just go off the fairway. I don't know whether he's clear of the trees. Behind them, the 16th. with the three or the four wood. <coughs> they all wait. That's away to the left, it's okay. Awkward chip, but quite a lot of green to work with. Got to negotiate the bunker. I think one of the reasons you find the golfers taking Iron clubs. At this stage of a match, they want to hit the ball hard. Been out there a long time, they're fully warmed up. But in contrast to the other, the previous two, Woosnam also taking a wooden club, a three wood. And I think he might try and fade this one a little bit. <coughs> Instantly, you see him leaning to the left, which means the ball's probably gone to the right. in the sand and in there but as we see oh an awkward one right at the back on a bit of a down slope and Mooland on the 17th he's uh, two down he uh, his shot here perhaps isn't quite as bad as it looks. he uh, be using a lofted club. He's only got about 115 yards to go, so he'll probably hit that home with a wedge. So he can easily get over the first tree. The second tree doesn't really come into play. Well, uh, we see him start this one off a little bit right. The ball's well above his feet, and you uh, tend to hit a slight pull hook off that sort of lie. But uh, he's really got to attack now. And, uh, of course, we can get this one close. It's only 115 yards. Cracking shot, and it 
made a noise almost as if it, it flicked the, the actual flag as it went by. It was a, really a super, super effort. Very good chance for a birdie, which he needs. He's two down, two to play. Now Ballester is from the high ground with a flatter lie looking directly down onto the green. Urging it on, well, it didn't want much more, but it certainly needed a touch. <coughs> well, it'll be Ballesteris to putt first. Back at the 16th, and here Ian Woosnam made a mistake. He was given an opening by Mike Harwood, but unable to take it. It shows the difficulty. 237 yards, and well, some of the best players in the world have not been able to find the green in off the tee. But it looks like Mike Harwood to play first. Fluffy lie, quite a lot of green, as I said, but uh, won't get any backspin out of that, so he's only got to just drop it on the first flat really? bit of green beyond the downslope on the far side of the bunker. Just that, and he managed to stop it short of the hole. Played a sort of mild type of bunker shot. And the 17th now, Mooland and Ballesteros. Sevy it is first, he's two up, two to play. Sudden death, of course, if uh, Mooland should win the last two holes, they'll go off down the first. And uh, first to win a hole, we'll go into the next round. Uh, this putt, I think, just comes a little bit right to left. It's running straight. Now it just stayed down the left. A very good effort. Never quite on the right line. Conceded and... Uh, Moulin now with a putt that must go in. If he misses, he loses two and one. If he holds, it's quite a long walk back to the uh, to the 18th, the old ninth. While he ponders, we'll pop back to the 16th. His opponent virtually short of a three. Woosnam second. Very good, it's very good, it's in. My goodness, a two and a win, and he's not dead yet by any means. What a lovely shot. That's the way to do it. Oh, any time you like. Well, what a turn up for the book. Now, can the other Welshman roll it in? He can, well done. So now. Back to the last hole. Ooland now one down. He's had three birdies in the last five holes. Dropped a stroke at the short 16th, and there is the 18th lying ahead of them. There's the graphic of the last hole 473 yards, just a couple of 
yards inside the limit for a par four. Over that it would be a par five. Uphill, probably into what little breeze there is. Very straight, as you can see. Bunker on the right off the tee, but they can get beyond that. And quite a collection of bunkers up round the green. A long, hard par four. And there's a view looking back. Big green, of course, if you go, I mean, sort of 10 or 12 yards through the green. Then, of course, there's an out-of-bounds fence at the back. But they've been getting there with a drive and, well, a three or four iron, two iron. Mostly well within their compass. And, in fact, of course, those of you watching yesterday saw both Des Smith and Ian Woosnam escape by making three here. Woosnam after that spectacular bunker shot which he managed to hold is now one down two to play and out with the one iron belting it up the right hand side of the fairway trying to keep out of trouble getting up on the flat high ground oh he's, he's hit a low raker that was a most extraordinary shot that was a low sure what happened there that was a most extraordinary shot it, it was a duck hook I don't know. extraordinary effort that was that would have given Mike Harwood a bit of relief and heart Too is using an, an iron. You know, David, David and Goliath match this. How would have about a foot taller than Woosnam, and that seemed to be going up our left-hand side as we look. I must confess, I, I lost sight of it. Maybe just behind the tree there where those people are coming out by the bunker. Roland up the 18th tee. Pushing it anxiously, and that's why it clattered into the trees on the right. There's a road there. It's not out of bounds or anything, but, well, unless he's very fortunate, he will be, won't have a shot for the green. Crucial mistake, maybe. And this very much the first game that uh, Ballesteros has had where he's been hunted to the end, a four and three and an eight and six. And uh, the second half of those games were very much sort of exhibitions, but this, the real stuff, just the sort of game he needed. And I don't think you'll find that clattering in the trees. Perfect. Sixteenth tee. Des Smith from Ireland is just short of the green. Lasbell is uh, lining his tee shot up. The match is all square. The one place you mustn't be is 15 yards or so left of the green. There's a wall, bushes, out of bounds. And he's let it go. Let it go right, I fancy. Could be in the sand or very close to it. There they are. There's Smith's ball just short. The run into the green. Azabel in the small bunker. Match all square.
Dennis Dernian two up on Ken Brown after 12. It was uh, three up. So these quarterfinals providing uh, gripping matches. Ballester is one up and they're on the 18th. Ian Mooland, Harwood one up against Ian Woosnam and they have two to play. Elazabal and Smith have had a, a real old uh, battle. First one man up, then the other, and then back again, and now all square with three to play. And Dennis Dernian, two up on the man who put out the uh, defending champion. Ken Brown beat this morning Bernhard Langer, but now two down with six to play. Quiet, please. Uh, Mike Harwood at the 17th hole from uh, just a little fold in the ground in the semi-rough relying okay must be careful he doesn't uh, get a shooter a flyer whizzes through the green doesn't look all that pleased and that's why shoved it to the right into the bunker again uh, Wisdom after that extraordinary looking tee shot low hook he's going to give this the full treatment with a 9 iron it doesn't look to be lying too badly he plays it out to the right now he may be trying to get a bit of draw and a bounce in and round and on but the ball sat down very quickly but he's found the green albeit a long way from the hole Woosnam's ball just well, perhaps a little fortunate just to climb up onto the green if it had been a little bit shorter he could have gone way down the hill and down the bank now Mooland bad shape he can only chop it out get under the trees go forward only 80 or 100 yards so still some well, perhaps as much as 200, 180 yards short of the green in two. Needs to win, remember. And meanwhile, his opponent playing his second. There's the shot he's got. And that looked a fairly lofted club. So flips a four or five iron, it seems throw to the green and slowly closing the door sixteenth green right uh, up in front of the, the clubhouse and the sports facility Elizabeth well, out of the sand match all square Smith already played see his ball about eight or ten feet away Bite, bite, bite. Oh, look at this. Sweet shot. That's a gimme. That's a three. Oh, he's seen some cracking bunker shots today. I don't think we'll bother to ask him to, to putt that one. Thank you. Well done. Now, Des Smith didn't play a particularly good chip shot it's a pretty straightforward chip and run from the front of the green but it left it considerably short we'll pop over to the 18th and see if Moulin can escape from his set of problems it's his third shot he didn't like it I don't know why but he knew he wasn't going to get any backswim so that's three, so all Seve has to do is get down in two for the match. Seventeenth green, and uh, Ian Wisdom's long putt. Just a little bit of movement from, from right to left, but the speed here, all important. 
Try and roll it into that imaginary circle. Should be all at 20 yards, maybe a bit more. Come on. Come on. Oh, he got the line beautifully, but you can see he's almost, almost four <laughs> feet short. He's one down, Woosnam. <laughs> Sixteenth green, Des Smith. This for a half, this to stay all square. Good putt from Smith. We've seen him hold a couple of those. Now, how would you remember put his second shot in the sand? He played a pretty good shot out, uh, considering he found an awkward sort of corner of the bunker. But you see, he's all of 15 feet away. There's Woosnam's uh, coin marker on the left, about four feet away. Howard one up. Because if he holds this and Woosnam were to miss, then of course Howard would uh, win the hole and the match two and one. So much can happen. No. Oh, well, well, well. And we did say before the these players, Mooland was right back in the match with Seve until they came to the 16th tee, although he was he was one down, he was right in it, and one mistake let Seve back at his throat. <coughs> and the same thing's happening here. Woosnam can hold this now. I would have to make him favorite to win the match. The other players, uh, the lesser players, get rather annoyed with themselves at letting opportunities miss, and that annoyance gnaws into their concentration. A little bit suspect on the short putts occasionally, uh, Woosnam. This to win this comparatively simple hole with a par four. Match all square. Eighteenth green, Seve, two for the match. Will he need both of them? Will he need? No, he doesn't. Storming three, and he wins by two up. Good match. Well, Savvy, that turned out to be quite a tough match in the end. Three up, and then he came back very strong with all those birdies. Yeah, well, Mark is a very good player, and uh, he was very close all the way, and uh, I was a little scared, you know, playing the last hole because he was he was getting stronger in the last few holes, and uh, I feel that I play, uh, you know, as good as possible I can. You know, I didn't have a single bogey in the whole day, and uh, I have uh, five birdies this afternoon, and uh, but uh, it was a very good match. That was a nice uh, pitch and putt you had at the 16th. Uh, yeah, crucial. Yeah, uh, probably, yeah. That was a crucial point, probably. And quite a finish there on 18. Well, I was looking for two putts, but I was very lucky to haul it. <laughs> Your bunker play looked uh, very good from what I saw today. A uh, lovely bunker shot at the first, and uh, one at, uh, would it be 14, 15, somewhere around there, you played a lovely shot? Yeah, uh, f uh, 14. Well, you know, any time you have a, a close bunker shot, you know, it will really, you know, you don't supposed to give too much credit uh, for that because it's not so difficult. It's just simple. Not for you, Savvy, but for, for the club golfers, they, uh, they have a lot of trouble with this shot, don't they? Well, not they? really, not really. It's, <laughs> it's quite simple shot. <laughs> They've been watching you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's nice. <laughs> um, thoughts on the golf course? Obviously, uh, not playing too difficult, but you've still got to play very good golf to get round, and you've scored particularly well this week. Well, I think we should talk about the weather. I mean, the weather is unbelievable. I've been playing uh, 15 years in England, and uh, I never see such a good weather. I mean, this is unbelievable. Looks you get like this all the time all in the Spain, way from don't you? Spain. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> on its way from there, is yeah. it? Great. Well, um, thanks for talking to us, and good luck thank tomorrow. You. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, it's been coming here for 15 years. We're actually in Wales, only by a, a yard or two, and the, the weather in Wales is 
excellent on this fine day. It has been for the last few days. And what a lovely, tranquil setting it is as we go back to the 16th. Lovely view, isn't it?